Uh, hey, let's talk about this one. Lions and Seahawks. Monday night football in Detroit. A rare Sunday off for the great Dan Miller. <laughs> How you doing, Dan? What's up, guys? Hey, Dan. What's going on, What's Dan? happening? You, baby. Hey, let me ask you. Uh, first and foremost. Is this like the skinny Armani? I haven't seen you in so oh, long, man. This Look is, at you. This is Ozempic Armani. <laughs> It's making your hair disappear too. You got a haircut. I know, man. Look Look at this guy, man. I'm telling you, Lady Lady Jane's at Ozempic does wonders for you. (laughs) Hey, Dan, I lost an ounce on the top of my head as well. Oh, God. Good job, man. I feel bad. I'm growing here. (laughs) Dan, how big of a loss is Frank Rag now? Huge. I mean, yeah. look, he's one of the best centers in the league, and he's the guy in the middle of that line that makes the calls. And uh, the nice thing is, you got Grant Glasgow to step in there as a veteran, and, and you trust him. And Coyote Owasika, who will jump in at guard, played a lot of snaps for them last year. But you, you don't get stronger losing a Frank Rag now. But you know, it's like Dan Campbell said earlier this week. You just this this team is built for the next guy to step up, like most teams in the NFL are going to talk about. But we've seen the Lions live that life. We saw the injuries last year where they had to make do in the secondary and you know, at times on the offensive line. So um, it, it's not great. Uh, everything that seemed to come out on Monday after that Arizona game was kind of deflating when it came to the injuries. But you just got to figure out a way to keep going. And, and guys like Josh Pascal and Coyote Owasika and, and Graham switching positions and whoever else they put in there all have to step up because nobody's going to feel sorry for you. Uh, look, Seattle's had their share of injuries, too, so you just move forward. Dan, you're absolutely correct, man, and this type of things happen, but it's good to see that Detroit Lions have added that depth to the offensive line as well as Hank Fraley. Hank Fraley has dealt with this now as the coach of the offensive line. He's dealt with those the last couple of years. Isn't it good to see this happening in a week after they reestablished that they are a running team? You see the carries last week, 43 carries for the Detroit Lions. They got back to their identity, David Montgomery, Jameer Gibbs. That's good to see. Yeah, no doubt. And, and you know what? We saw it at the end of that Rams game, too, where they just ran the ball down the field. Overtime, yeah. Overtime. So there, there's obviously, look, that's we know who this team is. We know what they want to do. They want to set up the, the pass with the run. And, you know, I think against Tampa, they just were going off what happened last year where they had passed the ball a lot against the Buccaneers and tried to kind of do it the other way, set up the run with the pass. And it just... You know, it didn't work out that way. That's just still one of the strangest games I've been around, guys. Seven trips to the red zone, one cash in. So every time that you say, okay, they didn't do this and they didn't do that, you know, you can also make the case, man, they moved the ball. It's just a frustrating loss. But, Braylon, you're right. Um, The more that you can get the ball into the hands of, of, you know, Montgomery and Gibbs, the better off you're going to be because it sets up your ability to then get it to Amon Ra or to get it to Sam Laporta or to get it to Jamo, whatever the case may be. So um, I would anticipate we'll see some of that. This is an interesting Seahawks defense coming in. They have given up some yards on the ground, haven't given up much through the air, but I would submit they haven't faced much in the way of quarterbacks either. So I think it's going to be a night where you learn a lot about both teams. Dan, I want to stick with the offense for a second. Shocking that I would like to stick with the offense. Uh Jared Goff. Now, I got to be careful how I phrase this question because anytime you talk about Jared Goff, the fan base seems to jump. I'm not, I'm not talking negatively about to Jared Goff. With that being said, this is game four of the regular season. He hasn't necessarily looked great in games one, in games two, in games three. He's gotten better. Is this a game that you need to see something more out of 16 and considering he's a leader on offense, there'll be no Frank Rag now, this is the $53 million year. Do you need to see something more out of Jared Goff going against a Geno Smith that he's lost to twice? Yeah, I think it's been an uneven season for Goff. I mean, if you go back to the first half of the game last week against the Cardinals, they put up 20 points. They yeah. scored on three of their first four possessions. You're thinking, all right, here we go. And then in the second half, you know, there was nothing to show for it in terms of points. So I think if you ask Jared, he'd tell you, look, we're looking for a complete effort, a complete 60 yeah. minute effort where they play to their capabilities. Cause we know what this offense is capable of. So yeah, I, I, I would put it on Jared. I would put it on this offense. I would put it on everybody that's out there to make plays and, and finish drives and put up the kind of performance that we know that they're capable of. Jared is right in the middle of it. Yeah. He's the quarterback. Uh, he came out of that Bucks game and said there were times where he tried to do too much. So I thought he showed great patience in okay. the first half of that game against the Cardinals and just waited for something to come open. Things weren't happening down the field. 
lot of check downs, which is fine. You've got guys that can make big plays off those. Uh, that's the kind of effort it's going to take. Just patience, utilize all the weapons in this offense. And Jared knows how, you know, functional they can be and how productive they can be. So for the whole offense led by Jared, yeah, I'd say this is Monday night. This is prime time. You want to go out there in front of your fans against a good team that's coming in 3-0. and Put on a show. Just play like you're capable of playing. Nothing more. Just play like you're capable of playing. This team will be fine. Hey, Dan, uh, good to have you on again. Thanks for uh, doing this for us on a Friday. We usually have you on Wednesdays, of course, but uh, about that offensive line and Graham Glasgow sliding over to center, we know he can do the job. Is Who would be next up in case something happens to him? Is there anyone out there on the waiver wire that they could pick up, anyone in the practice squad? What are your thoughts? I would think probably Ryan, uh, probably Nice would move over um, from the guys that they have up right now. I would think that he'd be the next one. Um, you know, they have the, the young kid from Florida on the practice squad right now, but I would think in terms of the guys that are up, it would be Nice. Um, unless I'm missing something, I think he'd be the next guy. So look, it's not great. You start getting oh. thin, any position, uh, except a receiver right now where they're stacked with, with guys, six guys on the roster, but, um, it, it's, it's nice to have a veteran to fall back on. If something were to happen to Graham, then it starts getting a lot more dicey. Right. Sam Laporta back at practice today, which is good news, but he's missed the whole week. We know he's banged up. Uh, what are your thoughts on him? I know they have a couple of other tight ends ready to roll. What do, what do you think the offense looks like when they line up on Monday? You know, we haven't seen the, the Sam Laporta this year that we've seen last year, and that's not necessarily on him. Sometimes that's opportunity. Sometimes that's what the defense is taken away from you. I do think with some guys, if there's a question this week, they might be careful knowing that they have a buy and you can buy some more time with some of them. So I'll be interested to see what does happen with Sam. Uh, it was good to see a lean back out there. Uh, Branch is, is, I didn't get his report as to what he did today yet, but um, I know he was back out there running around some yesterday. So look, it's, it's, they were beat up coming out of that game with Sam, with yeah. Aleem, with, with Branch being in concussion protocol, with the three guys that we know aren't going to play uh, between Davenport and, and Barnes and Ragnow. So uh, it, it's, it's a combination of trying to get your best guys out there, but also being smart with the understanding that while this early buy, when you got it on the schedule, probably was uh, not the best looking thing in the world. Now, all of a sudden, with the way they're beat up, comes at a good time. So uh, I would love to see Sam out there, but if he's got something that's nagging him, you just want to be smart because you got a long way to go after this game. Last week's game reminded me of last year's Seattle game. It was like a bloodbath. We couldn't get anyone off the damn field. We lost Barnes. We lose a bunch of other guys. Is it because of this, this preseason, Dan, that all this, all these injuries in the NFL, I, did, it, I haven't seen this many. This at this yeah, time of the year. I mean, but I feel like for years now we haven't seen people playing a lot no. in the preseason, and we didn't have this rash of injuries. I, you know, I, I was talking to, to TJ the other day about guys that, you know, get hurt all the time, and I said, it, it's these guys. It, is it just freak luck, or are they, you know? And, and Braylon, you live this life. Is it, you know, is there something about the structure of their body? He said, a lot. Most of the time, it's just luck. I mean, Davenport. It's a different injury each time. It's not like he's got the same thing that keeps cropping right. up. That was I a mean, dirty play. Watch the play, torn tricep, just got his arm knocked down. A play that happens, how you know, what thirty times in a game, something yeah. like that, to different players. And man, just sometimes it's bad luck at a bad time. And and, and I feel terrible for Davenport. He really looked like he could be a nice piece yep. for the Lions, and, and here he's he's hurt again, which has been a problem throughout his career. So, man, I. I don't know, Maz. I mean, people smarter than me would have to say whether or not it's something to do with these guys not playing in the preseason. I feel like for a long time, veterans have gotten minimal uh, participation in the preseason and they've been okay. So sometimes I think it's just, I think it's luck. And sometimes I think it's just, you know, a confluence of circumstances that makes it look like it's a bunch of different guys that are all getting it at the same time. Our weekly drive brought to you by Les Stanford, Chevrolet, Cadillac, Buick, DMC. Dan Miller joining us now. Dan, let me ask you, for whatever reason, sometimes teams just have your number. The Seattle Seahawks have beaten the Lions 9 out of 10, 6 in a row. In fact, the last time the Lions beat the Seahawks, Braylon was on the team with the Seahawks. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> likes to bring that up. Everybody Sorry, Bray. It's okay. Let's retire your number. Right, right exactly. 
exactly. Shut they should up. bring you out. <laughs> what what oh is God. it about? Uh, does a team just have another team's number? What, well, what do you make of that? Pete Carroll ain't Start there. by looking inward. In those three games that they have lost to Seattle with Dan Campbell as the head coach, the Lions have turned it over eight times and Seattle has turned it once. I probably don't need to go on any more than that. It's nope. the biggest indicator of winning and losing in the National Football League. So, you know, that's – that's problematic, number one. Number two, man, they just haven't had an answer for Geno Smith the last two years. I mean, the first year it was Russell Wilson. The last two years it's been Geno Smith, and he's been outstanding. And he's got four touchdowns, no interceptions, and uh, you know I think he's like 55 for 71 over those two games. The three quarterbacks in the three games are 75 for 100. So they got to find a way to slow this Seattle offense down, find a way to corral Geno Smith, and probably – you know, coming off that game in which you played against Kyler Murray is a good thing. Geno Smith is not Kyler Murray, but he will get out of there and run if you let him. And the Lions have let him do that. So I think it really starts with, it's always going to start with stopping the run, whether regardless of which running back is back there for Seattle, uh, whether it's Charbonnet or whether it's Walker, whatever it is, they have to find a way to slow that down. But Smith has been the guy that has really hurt them. And then they've hurt themselves with turnovers. So you know, Dan Campbell said it on Monday when he was talking about injuries. He said, whoever's out there, we have to play a clean game. Clean game starts with not giving the other team more opportunities because you turn the ball over. And I think that's where it starts with the Lions. Look at that number in the box score on Monday or Tuesday morning. And if that thing looks even or the Lions are ahead, it gives you a lot better chance to win. That's just life in the NFL. Dan, you mentioned those two running backs that the Seahawks have. Obviously, uh, you know, the two wide receivers, Tyler Lockett, and well, three, really, Tyler Lockett, three, Jackson yeah. Smith, and, Jack, and Jigba, and DK um, Metcalf, DK Metcalf, DK Metcalf. Get, get all the love offensively for them. But those two running backs have done some work. Kenneth Walker went over 100 yards uh, in one game. Uh, Charbonnet over 90 yards in a game. The Lions' rush defense has not allowed a single player over 70 yards. 70 since 20 that tw that Carolina game I think it was back in 2022 uh they they take the running backs out of games yeah no that's that's been a staple of what they do um and, and it has been for a while and that's a great place to start on defense it's where every single coach you talk to every single week tells you you have to start but they're fourth in the league against the run right now they were second in the league against the run last year um, they are an elite defense when it comes to stopping the run, and they're going to have to be this year. They did a great job against Murray in the second half of that game. He really only got loose that one time, which was a first and 20, and he got 21 yards on the play. Other than that, they did a great job, and I think it's going to take that kind of effort again. Now, one thing you had in that game that you're going to have to have in this game was Davenport setting one of those edges. This week, it's going to be Josh Pascal, And you know what? It's go time for Josh. He's a second-round draft pick, and they've been waiting. And now it's his time, and they're looking to him and saying, we need you. And I think this is a really critical time in his career to say, you know what? I can step up and be a starting caliber NFL player, or maybe you get exposed, and, and it's just kind of a middling effort, and that kind of defines you. I, I, I'm a big fan of Josh's. I think he's got a lot of talent, great kid. But it, it's really go time. He's got to find some way to play now and, and be one of those guys that can be a force on the other side of Aiden. We know what you're getting out of him, but Aiden needs help as well. And, and Davenport looked like he was going to be a prime guy to do that big, strong guy, set the edge, great bull rush. Uh, now it's going to be Pascal, who is, you know, was talked about today. He's going to do it a different way, but he's got to get it done. I'm, I'm rooting for him. I'm really anxious to see him get a heavy load of snaps and see what he can do with it. Hey, Dan, final thing. Calvin Johnson going to be honored at halftime. Obviously, it's just so great to see him uh, be a part of this organization again. Just your thoughts on Calvin and the honor and uh, everything that we expect to see at halftime. Calvin is the best. I mean, it's um, Calvin is as fine a person as he is a player, and that's world class. I mean, he's just a good dude. And I will say, I was thinking about this last night, you know, I got a lot of things that I've been lucky enough to do, but, but calling every play of his career is certainly at the top of the list. And just to have that ringside seat, that, that seat in the press box to watch him do what he did, just an amazing, amazing first ballot Hall of Fame player. And I, I'm, it's going to be awesome. I mean, it's already electric on a Monday night, but to see Calvin come out there 
you know, get his flowers in front of 65,000 plus in downtown Detroit at Ford Field. And, and, you know, as hype as those crowds have been, they'll be even more so with him out there. So um, I could go on and on about just everything I got to watch with him and, you know, the things he endured, quite frankly, through some tough times and, and physically and mentally and, and all that stuff. So I am the biggest Calvin Johnson fan in the world, and I can't wait to see this. And, and his name belongs up there, and it belongs up there forever, which is exactly where it's going to be. The great it. Dan Miller, everybody. Listen to him on 97.1 The Ticket Lions Radio Network. And, of course, watch him on Fox 2 every night, uh, Sunday Sportsworks Lions, Lions game night. And you can check us out and That's all that good stuff. Night. You got it all going on. And I know you'll be watching the Tigers tonight, sir. Go get him, Dan. Yes, sir. Can't wait. Hey, I mean, this is unbelievable. I mean, but – Armani, you were fat when they were like losing, <laughs> and now you're skinny and I know. winning. See what happened? See how, yeah. see how quick it turned it off to me? He woke up with a single shot. He woke up and chose violence hey, today, man, he's ladies and gentlemen. Dan is oh, savage you. today. Dan, that, that's, man, that's not nice, Dan. He's he not the nice guy hey, I know, man. Hey, man, he can say whatever he wants <laughs> to me. I know he loves me. Uh, and I love you, All Dan right, Miller. I'll see you, buddy. Always good to talk to you, Dan. Quick, turnarounds can happen quickly. <laughs> and it's the Tigers and Ryan Armani. Yeah, Ryan, you were never fat. Dude, I was overweight. Yeah, you were a little you were a little chubby. I was about 30 pounds overweight. Nah, 30. Not that many. Obese. You look great. Dude, You're I was two obese. four I was 242. 5'10. I wish I was 242. Yeah. <laughs>